The experience has haunted me for decades. I never took a life, but I witnessed many deaths. Our squad patrolled the treacherous landscapes of Miraz, a harsh and hostile world at the edge of the galaxy. Miraz was no ordinary planet. Its surface was a tumult of jagged rocks and volatile gases. The sky, perpetually shrouded in a reddish haze, cast eerie shadows over the alien terrain. Our platoon leader replaced me at the front with another soldier, a young recruit eager to prove himself. The one who took my place encountered a hidden trap left by the Vex, an alien species known for their ruthless tactics and cunning. The explosion from their proximity mine decimated him. His head and arms were obliterated in an instant. The aftermath was chaotic. The air was thick with smoke, and the ground was littered with debris. The blast had torn a massive crater into the earth, a grim reminder of the dangers lurking in the shadows of Miraz. We worked alongside mechanical units that projected intense plasma bursts, invaluable in our efforts to clear hazardous zones. These machines, affectionately known as plasma scorches, were critical in our operations. Their streams of plasma cutting through the dense alien vegetation with ruthless efficiency. The first time I saw one unleash its plasma stream, I was awestruck by the sheer force and eerie sound it made. Even standing behind the vehicle, the plasma's roar eclipsed the noise of its engine. We joked about it being a Starship barbecue service, but there was nothing humorous about the weapon's effectiveness. The plasma scorches could obliterate anything in their path, leaving nothing but scorched earth behind. I bore no ill will toward the Vex. I never understood why we were stationed on Miraz, but I knew that hesitation meant death, for me or my comrades. We'd established a base on a high plateau, and every morning we would clear the area of any evidence from the previous day, including buried refuse and concealed positions. On one such morning, as I led the patrol, we avoided known paths to circumvent traps. I wielded a plasma blade to slice through the dense alien vegetation. Exhaustion was setting in, and my platoon leader took over the point position. We began our return to the plateau, but the Vex had anticipated our move. They had fortified the area, and as we approached, one of their minds claimed the life of the soldier who had replaced me. His injuries were beyond description, and although his armor protected him somewhat, it was futile against the blast. The Vex fired at us briefly before retreating into the alien wilderness. We cleared the area and called for evacuation. Another soldier and I carried the fallen comrade up the slope, where he was eventually airlifted. I knew his face but have forgotten his name. The memory of that day has tormented me for fifty years. Why was I spared while he was not? I believe something greater kept me alive, though I do not know why. Since then, I have strived to live honorably, hoping to repay the debt of my survival. One particular aspect of our deployment was the use of plasma vehicles, massive constructs of metal and energy designed to project streams of searing plasma. These vehicles, which looked like something out of an old sci-fi film, were equipped with advanced weaponry capable of melting through the toughest alien defenses. The plasma they emitted was an intense, fiery orange capable of incinerating anything it these machines were crucial in clearing out hazardous zones, making our task much more manageable. The first time I saw the plasma burst in action, I was struck by its terrifying power and the roaring sound it produced. The weapon's roar was like a thunderstorm trapped in a confined space, echoing through the valleys of Miraz. The plasma's heat was so intense that it could vaporize rock and metal alike, creating a shocking visual display of destruction. Even standing behind the vehicle, the plasma's roar eclipsed the mechanical rumble of its engine, making it clear that this was no ordinary weapon. We dubbed it the Bonfire Delivery Service in jest, but the reality of using it was grim. The plasma streams were devastatingly effective, incinerating anything in their path. I bore no animosity toward the Vex. I questioned our mission on Miraz but understood the necessity of not hesitating. The plasma weapons were brutal. They didn't offer a quick death. Instead, the enemy endured excruciating pain, 
often lasting several minutes. It was a horrifying spectacle to witness, and I struggled with the moral implications of such warfare. The Vex responded to our plasma vehicles with greater resilience than expected. Their tactics were more sophisticated and their defenses formidable. They fought back fiercely but were ultimately overpowered by the plasma weaponry. Unlike the Vex, the Varlax, a different alien species we encountered, seemed to recognize their disadvantage and would flee rather than face the searing flames. This difference in strategy highlighted the evolving nature of our enemies and the unpredictable nature of warfare on Miraz. War is an aberration of human nature, and reflecting on my time on Miraz feels like a surreal dream. The atrocities I witnessed, men burned alive, and the visceral aftermath often seem like memories of a different reality. War's impact on me is profound leaving me with an uncomfortable sense of detachment and disbelief. The scars of those battles remain etched deeply into my psyche. One haunting aspect of Miraz was the grotesque nature of fallen enemies. The bodies were often left in unnatural poses, twisted and contorted by the violence they suffered. It was disturbing to see them in such a state, their bodies broken and unrecognizable. The alien environment of Miraz added to the eerie atmosphere, with its distorted gravity and harsh conditions making the scenes of death even more unsettling. I came across a Vex soldier who had been caught in a plasma blast. His insides had spilled out and he lay on his back, holding onto his disemboweled intestines as if trying to pull them back into his body. The sight was both horrific and tragic, a stark reminder of the brutality of war. His eyes were wide open, and insects, adapted to the harsh environment, crawled over his remains. I still think about that soldier frequently, though I never directly caused any deaths. Witnessing so many suffer and die has left an indelible mark on me. Looting was a common practice, and though it seemed to offer some semblance of normalcy amid the chaos, it left me conflicted. The dead were stripped of their belongings, helmets, weapons, and other personal items. I personally avoided scavenging from bodies that had been dead for long periods. The sight of recently deceased was less disturbing, almost as if they were merely asleep. The items we recovered were sometimes traded for supplies or used to remember those who had fallen. Reflecting on the nature of war and the way we've handled its aftermath, I see the shift in how soldiers today are restricted from taking trophies. Yet, the instinct to collect and remember is timeless. Each battle and its aftermath tell a story. Every soldier's story deserves to be remembered. The stories of bravery, sacrifice, and survival are what bind us together, transcending the horrors of conflict and shaping our collective memory.